station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston station, I am ready for the event. CNN International, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is CNN. How do you hear me? Good afternoon, CNN. This is Tim Peake on board the International Space Station. I hear you loud and clear. Wonderful. Well, welcome to our humble studio all the way out there in space. Um, let me ask you, what was it that inspired you the most to do what you're doing now? Was it that fantastic first moonwalk by Neil Armstrong? You know, there's been many inspirations throughout my career. And yes, as, as a small boy, I, I looked up to the stars and, and often wondered about our place in the universe and the solar system and was fascinated by space. Um, and then as a teenager, it was a passion for aviation that took over. And the first time I ever sat in a glider, I knew I wanted to be a pilot. And I was just very fortunate that I was able to fulfill my dream of becoming a pilot. Um, and then later in life, of course, having worked my way up to being a test pilot, I found myself in the right time, the right place. I had the qualifications that the European Space Agency were looking for, and I was able to, uh, to fulfill that early boyhood dream of becoming an astronaut. Well, it is indeed a rare privilege to be out there. It's an amazing thing to just be able to talk to you. What did you feel when you first saw the Earth from space? It's the most incredible feeling. And the first time I saw the Earth was just a few uh, moments after insertion into orbit. In the Soyuz capsule, we had the main engine cut out. And that's quite a jolt. You get launched forward into your seats, and then suddenly everything starts floating. And you realize you're in weightlessness. You're in orbit around planet Earth. And I was able to loosen my straps and let myself float up out of the seat so that I could have a look out of my window on the right-hand side of the Soyuz. And I saw ourselves just before we went into the night part of the orbit, I saw planet Earth shortly followed by a moonrise, and it was just the most incredible feeling to be, you know, to be in orbit and see the planet for the first time. It was spectacular. Is launch scary? I mean, do you ever feel scared when you're actually, you know, on the launch pad and, and taking off? You know, we've trained so long and so hard for that moment, and we're just focused on our procedures and making sure that everything goes smoothly through the, through the launch sequence. So there is really no time and no place for any fear or apprehension at that stage. You're simply just executing the plan. But I was very conscious of trying to also absorb every feeling, every emotion, you know, knowing it's such a special event so that I could kind of record it. Uh, and I actually did a diary that, that evening after launch so that I would remember everything that I felt during the launch and it, it was just the most incredible feeling and that that feeling of power and acceleration as the rocket accelerates it's just addictive and um, I felt myself being pushed back into the seat especially during the first stage and the third stage and it really was a wonderful feeling of, of acceleration well, I wonder if you can talk and execute some movements up there at the same time. Every child's fantasy is to be able to somersault in space and do all those things that you do. And while you're doing that, I wonder what are the most profound philosophical and personal lessons that you've learned in your six months in, in space? Gosh, uh, you know, some of the, the, the things you learn up in space um, really is, is what we do in training as well, is just to be uh, methodical and to, to work slowly and accurately. That's the best thing you can do as an astronaut. Um, you know, we're, we're really in a very privileged position up here. We have an enormous responsibility with regards to the science that we're trying to do. Um, and so we just have to try and be as professional as possible. But we've got the wonderful support team from Mission Control down in Houston uh, and in Munich and in Russia and in Japan as well and everybody is helping us on the ground to execute the plan so really it's a it's all about teamwork and you're you know the most important thing is is being a good team player and finding your place in that team and uh, I'm going to do a somersault like you asked me to whilst you ask me the next question 
Excellent. Good, good, good. Because I want to know, beyond weightlessness and proving that yet again, what was the most important scientific uh, experiment you conducted or, or, or the, the, the contribution to science that you've made? You know, it's very hard to kind of pin it down to one most important experiment. There's been over 250 experiments during Expedition 46 and 47. Some of the most enjoyable experiments are certainly the more hands-on for the astronauts. Um, for example, airway monitoring, where we used our, our own airlock that we normally use for spacewalking. We used it as a hyperbaric chamber so that we could reduce the pressure in our lungs and investigate airway inflammation. Uh, that was quite exciting. Also, we've done some flame combustion experiments up here which are exciting there's a lot of medical research going on in microgravity at the moment growing things like protein crystals i think that's fascinating research and will have huge benefits for people back on earth um, so really the science falls into many categories as a pilot and somebody who's already always interested in tech technology um, you know some of the stuff we're doing with metal alloys and composite materials in our furnaces as well investigating new materials that are stronger and lighter and will benefit uh, for example our aviation aviation industry. That, that's very exciting to me as well. Um, you obviously, as, as, as a Brit, have got an enormous amount of attention. You've run a marathon, you presented Adele with an award from outer space, but it was actually a British woman who was the first British astronaut in space. Uh, what do you think of her blazing that trail? Helen is a huge inspiration to me, and I had the uh, pleasure of speaking to her on Friday night, actually. We, we're, we're quite close, and uh, of course, she was celebrating her 25th anniversary since her Soyuz TM-12 mission 25 years ago, and to the Mir space station. And uh, so it was great to be able to speak to her. Uh, I've also got one of her books that uh, up here with me that was signed by Yuri Gagarin, as along with her crew, and it's now been signed by the International wow. Space Station crews. Um, wow. she, she really, you know, she paved the way. She, what she achieved um, at her young age as well, going into space, was absolutely incredible. Um, and I'm just very happy now that the, the UK government is funding human spaceflight, and I'm able to come on this mission uh, as a member of the European Space Agency, which is a great step forward for the UK. Well, you've just mentioned in one sentence the UK and Europe. So I have to ask you, as a scientist, as an astronaut, what do you think the effect of Britain, if it chooses to leave Europe, could be on what you do and on science in general? You know, it won't actually have any effect on, on what we do with regards to the European Space Agency and this international partnership. And that's something that is one of the, uh, you know, the strongest messages that we have in, in, the, in the life of the International Space Station is that it really cuts through all barriers. It's such a strong partnership. And, uh, of course, the UK will still be part of the European Space Agency. That won't change at all. And the European Space Agency is still part of this international uh, partnership with, uh, up here with the International Space Station. Um, but what I would say is, of course, that we can, we can do things in space that we couldn't possibly do as one nation. And this is the model that we need to take forward, it's certainly when we're looking at going to the moon and further to Mars and ultimately to explore our solar system. We need to be forging together in partnerships uh, in order to share our strengths uh, and, and be able to move forward. Well, well, in my last few seconds, where next for Tim Peake? Where else would you like to explore in our, you know, outer space? Well, you know, the, the space station has still got an exciting lifetime, at least till 2024, and there's, there's so much still to learn in microgravity. But I'm excited to be looking forward into the mid to late 20s. I would like to see us return to the moon. Uh, I think that there's an awful lot that we can learn in terms of having lunar exploration missions and having a permanent lunar habitat, which will help us as a stepping stone onto a Mars mission, which has to be the, the real near-term near goal for human spaceflight and exploration. Fantastic. Major Tim Peak, thank you so much for joining us from space. It's been a real pleasure talking to you, and uh, thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.
Thank you, CNN International Station. Please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.